Welcome to the Government Information Services Week in Review. I am Alicia Ali. We begin with news that in light of concerns recently raised, the Ministry of Health and Wellness stated that the Zika virus has not been officially categorized as a sexually transmitted disease. Medical Officer for Health Dr. Sharon Belmar George clarified that though sexual intercourse has been proven to be a mode of transmission for the Zika virus, the main mode of transmission is the bite of an infected female Aedes aegypti mosquito. The Centers of Disease Control have documented the presence of the Zika virus in semen, also in vaginal fluids, and in lower levels through other fluids such as saliva and breast milk. But transmission through semen and vaginal fluids are the two that have been um, confirmed to date. They've also confirmed transmission through male to female transmission, male to male transmission, and also female to male transmission. They've not documented up to this point female to female transmission. As with other diseases which can be transmitted sexually, Dr. George indicated that the Ministry of Health continues to implore the public to engage in protected sex. In particular importance to us is women who intend to get pregnant or women who are pregnant because it has been documented that the Zika virus can stay in the semen for up to 60 days at this point. So it is possible that a pregnant woman can get Zika through unprotected sex through her partner apart from the bite of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Sensitization sessions on the implications of Zika virus and the possible modes of transmission are routinely provided through antenatal clinics at wellness centers throughout the island. The medical officer said the hope is that women and men will take the advice seriously to protect themselves and their unborn baby as well. From the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Glenn Simon. Still in health news, World Suicide Prevention Day is recognized annually around the globe. The St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center joined the rest of the world in recognizing World Suicide Prevention Day under the theme Connect, Communicate, Care. The World Health Organization estimates that over 800,000 people die by suicide each year. That's one person every 40 seconds, and up to 25 times as many make a suicide attempt. Principal Nursing Officer at the Mental Wellness Center, Glenda Sipal, advocated for more community involvement in tackling the issues of suicide in St. Lucia. We would like to urge all persons to connect with people. We know persons who have committed suicide and their families are suffering. We also know persons with suicidal behavior or thoughts. We want persons to render support, to communicate with them, to have that open channel of communication so that they can share what they are going through. And in order for you to connect with them, you would have to communicate. And also we want persons to communicate that they care about these people. Suicide Prevention Day activities commence with a church service at the Maranatha SDA Church, followed by a march from Serenity Park to the Derek Walker Square, and culminated with a two-hour concert organized by the St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center in collaboration with Reason FM. We are having a mini empowerment concert and there are a number of persons to perform. All in all, their performance primarily addresses um, Encouraging words, words to uplift, words to edify, and words to just say to people to hold on in spite of the many challenges that one could face in life and that there is always an answer to challenges. Speaking of answers, we have a number of places that people could go to to get the support that they need. For example, human service organizations, the 203 line at the wellness center, and also counselors and priests and pastors and even your very own family member. So all in all, the message we really want to share with St. Lucia is each one watch one, communicate, connect and care. And in so doing, we could actually save not just a life, but many lives. The first World Suicide Prevention Day was held in 2003 as an initiative of the International Association for Suicide Prevention and the World Health Organization. Since then, World Suicide Prevention Day has taken place on September 10th each year. From the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Glenn Simon.
The Cultural Development Foundation launched St. Lucia's first online cultural map on the 14th of September 2016. The St. Lucia Cultural Map is an interactive resource that maps data on persons, places and spaces engaged in either cultural or creative activities across the island. Minister in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Empowerment, Youth Development, Sports, Culture and Local Government, Senator the Honorable Fortuna Belrose called on the media to lend a helping hand to the creative industries. We must be the ones to push ourselves. We cannot depend on others to do it for us. We must be the media. You have a critical role to play. You have to assist us in promoting things local, in engaging in things local, in supporting things local, in supporting our young people. Because when you don't support our young people, when you don't give them that airplay and that airtime, you know, they cannot achieve what they would want to achieve. And so we need you all. We'll be calling on you all. We'll be asking for you. We'll be making the demands on you to be able to provide that support and create the enabling environment for real and true, sustainable success. Executive Director of the Cultural Development Foundation, Belchua Henry, says that this project has the capacity to transform the island's tourism industry. This is an active um, attempt and an active project to put producers and consumers in touch with one another. It's very important. Um, it is not inconceivable that as a result of this map, that visitors to the island can begin to make a request of the hotel industry, the tourism industry, indicating what the sort of things they would like to see. The St. Lucia cultural map was designed with the interests of the local, cultural and creative industry policy makers and stakeholders in mind. The Verve Bar and Grill in Rodney Bay chose to honor Shaquan Prudent of Grand River Grosley with a check valued at $1,000. The gesture was made following Shaquan's exceptional achievement at the common entrance examinations. Maya Sifley, a representative of the company, says it is only fitting that such an achievement should be rewarded. We feel that there is a great importance to give back to the community of Grosley, specifically to young people. We value hard work and we like to show gratitude and to show encouragement and as a token of our appreciation and to reward your queen on doing so well, we thought this was important to do and we hope that it's well received. Parliamentary representative for Groselet and the Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Empowerment, Youth Development, Sports, Culture and Local Government, the Honorable Leonard Montoot, commended the initiative. I want to acknowledge this gesture made by Vogue to a constituent who has distinguished himself by performing outstandingly, young Shaquin Prudent, a student of the Tim Pullet Primary School has done exceptionally well <clears throat> in his common entrance exam and I think this is a just reward to him. This scholarship I think will most certainly go a long way in facilitating his further education at the secondary level and as parliamentary representative I want to compliment Verv for taking on this initiative. I think this is the kind of support we want from the corporate Shaquan's mother, Fleria Prudent, thanked Vuv St. Lucia for the contribution, saying that the funds received would go a long way. A New York-based St. Lucian organization donates science resources to the Department of Education. An organization of St. Lucia Nationals based in New York is helping promote the instruction of science subjects on the island through a major donation of science supplies. The donation of laboratory kits and science texts and resources for teachers and libraries was made recently to the Department of Education at a brief handing over ceremony. President of the St. Lucia Cultural Organization Marlin Daniel Paul says the members of the group are happy to give back to their homeland. As president of the group, it is my sincere privilege to present six commercial bins of science equipment um, and library resources, in addition to teacher resources, to the St. Lucia government, and with my hope that the materials will be distributed equitably to the most needy schools. Deputy Chief Education Officer responsible for instruction within the Department of Education, Rafina Charles says the donation will help in assisting the ministry's national thrust to get more students enthusiastic about science. I give you my word that we are going to ensure 
that these equipments meet the students that mo are most needed. And I wish to say thank you so very much and to extend our heartfelt thanks to your organization. The handing over ceremony was conducted at the offices of the Department of Education, Waterfront Castries. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting. St. Lucia's high jump Olympian Laverne Spencer was treated to a hero's welcome on Thursday. I am delighted to have experienced what I considered to be the most successful year of my long career. It was a year that enabled me to go where years ago a St. Lucian would only dream of going, as I, as I was able not only to be invited to compete in the prestigious Diamond League events, but to also win medals and end the Diamond League race ranked second behind the 2016 Olympic champion and world number one from Spain. It was another year when I was able to proudly fly St. Lucia's flag around the world, reminding all who watched and observed that despite our size and limit, limited resources, we can produce individuals who can stand toe to toe and be competitive against the best the world has to offer. As a result of a sixth place finish in the Rio Olympics, this is truly a remarkable occasion which demands celebration and recognition. Laverne embodies what we want every young St. Lucian, you understand, to have. She, according to the Chef de Mission, she makes your life easy on tour. It's easy to manage Laverne because Laverne is a disciplined young person who is committed to excellence and ensuring that she achieves the best that she can every time she steps out to represent St. Lucia. I think that Laverne has symbolized for a very, very long time what it takes in order to succeed. And it's discipline, it's hard work, it's perseverance. And the real recognition is not that she just achieved sixth place in the Olympics, but it's the year that she's had and that she's consistently been in the top three of all the major events that she has done. And to me, that. That is an incredible achievement. Yeah, we're giving them the Lucian Pressure! Lucian Pressure! Lucian Pressure! Lucian Pressure! Thank you so Good much, children. Thank you. And that's the Week in Review from the Government Information Service. I'm Alicia Ali.